Welcome back guys to Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Last time we were together, Blackbeard I think has retired from the pirate business and now we are back at Abstergo Entertainment. So I think we're going to go and hack some computers because we can is one of the things that we can do. So I'm going to try and find myself a terminal that's not got anyone in it. Oh no, that's got someone in it. Oh, who's this woman? Hello, hello. How's you going? How you doing? How's your mother? I heard she's had a limp recently. I hope she gets better. <laughs> <laughs> she might have a limp. We don't know. There's anyone in the... Oh, here we go. Here's a computer terminal. I think... Can we hack this? I think we can. Or is this my one? Oh, oh dear. Okay, I've kind of forgotten how to do this thing. I've not done it in a while. Okay, so what does that do? Oh, it's like a teleporter. Dun, 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 dun. Kind of a weird way to hack data. Hack data, that's the one. So, core access granted, extraction sequence initiated, core breach accessing information. Awesome. So, what kind of information are we accessing? Uh, the anti Kytheria mechanism. I don't know what that is. What's that? Originally assumed to be an analog computing device built for the purposes of determining the future positions of astral bodies. Abstergo industry scientists have recently discovered that the Athkinthian mechanism is merely one small portion of a much larger tool. A so-called prognosis... I can't say that word. What's that? Prognosis... Blah, 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 blah. I'm not even going to try. Thought to have been used in the first civilization to make probability-based predictions of future events. It has been confirmed, for instances, that our precursor race used such a device in conjunction with their inherent precognitive abilities to locate and contact Mr. Desmond Miles, the source of Sample 17 strand. The purposes that shall remain classified. It is also known that, due to the nature of these quantum probability measurements, that such mach machines would have been exceedingly difficult to use, and that many hundreds and thousands of trials would have been needed to peak such great distances into the future. Right, I kind of see what's going on there. So what's that? So we got the Baghdad Battery. A mystery of the puzzle scientists for decades. Da -da 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 -da. This is another one of those things that I feel like maybe I should read after the series is finished. Like, do you guys want me to read these things after I finish this series? Because there's so many of them. There's so many. It's just so much stuff to read. We've also got the stuff about Subject 17. There's my employee passport. Okay, so we hacked it. Awesome. Uh, computers hacked. Two out of 33. Yay. Now, is there any more? Oh, there's another one. Is this my computer? I don't know. This is my computer, I think. Okay, so we don't want to use that. Oh, here's another one. Here's another one that we can hack. So, hackity hack hack, shall we? Okay, so where are we going with this one? Um. Nope. We need to... Oh, I kind of see where we're going with this one. Let's go down this way. I think that'll... Nope, that's not going to do it. Oh, there we go. We got it. Marvelous. Alright, so what are we getting from this? Core access granted. Initiated extraction sequence. Extraction sequence initiated. Core breach. Awesome. And what have we got? What's... Oh, hello. This is a very long one. This is a very long one, but I'm going to read the little note at the top. So, Olivier, here's the initial presentation I received. It's a little tight light on facts, but these guys know what they're doing. We'll know more when they arrive on Monday. Let me know if you feel like attending. John, here's the initial presentation. Da -da -da. Bloom. Why now? Why wait? Why bloom? Okay, so I think this is just a presentation. Confidential, privacy and security, intrigue. How did we ever do business without it? Accessible. Oh, it's, it is literally just some horrible presentation. Um, the Dream, The Bloom Promise, A Dozen Cities, what's that? 100 major corporations, 1,000 small businesses for almost a decade, CTOS has served its clients' need with track record unparalleled in the modern age. How do we do this? Durable, ultralight HD cameras, ultra-speed fiber optic networking, it just seems to be how the future is Bloom. Okay, the future is Bloom, we look forward to working with you. That just seems to be some kind of advertisement thing, like Abstergo Entertainment security presentation or something. Alright, is there any more? Oh, that's the big boss's room. Can we go in there? I don't think we can. What's that? Is that? That's a, a bottle of water. Okay. For a moment I thought it was a bottle of coke. What's that? Watch this space for upcoming an announcements. I'm watching. Working together. Tell me. Give me an announcement. We all hope that a flash of inspiration to drive the next generation of discovery. Do we? Is, is that what we all hope? 
Fair enough. <laughs> I, d I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure whether I'm down with that kind of idea. Fut future network of discovery? No. Not that sort of thing for me. Uh, there's another computer over here. Can we hack that? Oh, we can. We can hack all of these machines. Awesome. Now. As the data moves, there are security programs constantly monitoring the data flow. You need to sneak past them or they will destroy your data and send it back home. Okay. All oh, right. And go. Go. That's kind of cool. This is this is kind of interesting. It's like Frogger with lines. And go go. Wait, shit, 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 shit. Oh my god, and we have done it. All right, so which one should I go into? I'm going to go in this one. Access granted. Extraction is successful. Bypassing standard standard protocols, connecting successfully. Dun 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 dun, dun it. Oh, subject zero audio file. What the hell? Let's have a bit of a listen, shall we? I have now resumed the practice of dressing as a man. I have put off my woman's dress. Why did you take it? Who made you take it? I took it of my own free will. With no constraint. I prefer a man's dress to a woman's. You made an oath, Jeanne. You swore to never again dress as a man. I never meant to swear that I would not resume the practice. Why is have you done so? Because it is more lawful and suitable for me to return to the practice of wearing a man's dress. Being always among men, than to have a woman's dress. I have resumed it because a promise made to me has not been. How is he? Our three, doing well. Are we still in 18th century Hungary? No. His connection is so stable, he's jumped between a few ancestors today. We're in 15th century France now. Turns out he's related to one of Joan of Arc's executioners. <laughs> Surprise. I mean, yesterday, Vidic asked me to help him work out some of the bugs in his audiovisual renderer, and I told him... No, no, no. Come on, Satish, not you. It wouldn't be permanent. A few months at most. Months? That will kill every ounce of momentum we have. It won't, I promise. Honestly, I think this could help us. If I can get a look at what these people are doing, we could... Come on. He's trying to pull you over to his side. Don't you see that? He's luring you with quick victory and prestige. That's not what this is about, honestly. I need to get back to work. Eileen, I'm sorry. Do what you must. I'll survive. This is long. Wow, it keeps going as well. This is good. We're going to be here for a while. Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32, April 2nd, 1981. Host Eileen Bach, DNA sample SV1970. Okay. Miriam. Miriam, are you awake? What? Miriam's are coming for me. Who is? The guards? I see them from my window, amassing in the courtyard. My time is up. Basil, don't say this. You don't know that. Forgive me for this, Miriam. But I must tell you something. The artifact. We have it. But only Oscar and I know its location. Don't tell me. So we will release you. Your family has connections. You must take the artifact and bring it to the assassins in Paris. Please don't. I don't want to know. It's safer if I don't. Hush now. If I die, knowledge of its location dies with me. You must bring it to the assassins. Assassins? I don't understand. It's a spy of St. Petrus. No, I don't want to hear. Sam, seven! Sam! This is kind of creepy and vaguely intense. <laughs> no, I think Baffle just died. Poor Baffle. Got a funny name anyway. <laughs> Hello? Eileen, hi. It's Carl. Carl, I know it's you. Sorry, you just sound exhausted. Did I wake you? No, no, I'm... I've just been busy. It sounds like it. I'm just a little tired, that's all. No, I mean, your... your project sounds fascinating. Your colleague, Dr. Warren Vidic, he called me recently and he told me what you've been up to. He what? Warren? Yeah, he told us about your research, memories, ancestry, all of that. He even asked if we'd be willing to come in and... No! Jesus, no! What the hell is he doing? Eileen, it's okay. 
We signed some papers, non-disclosure stuff. No! He's trying to fuck me over! Damn it! Eileen, we just talked about my mother. Just like you and I did. World War II. That's all. It's the artifact. The what? Carl, if he calls you again, you tell him you work through me, okay? That's it. Vidic has been a pain in my ass for years. And I don't need him getting all the glory for my two years of hard work. All right. Uh, so how should I go about this? I mean, the wheels are in motion. I... I don't know. Just go through me if he contacts you again. Please? All right. You'll do that? Of course. Yes. Thank you, Carl. I'm sorry I was short with you. I've just been exhausted. That's all. It's all right, hon. Just... just take care of yourself. This is really wrong, then. Kind of confusing. Morning, Eileen. Time. We're almost ready. Just a few more adjustments. Hmm. Okay. I had the team do some research on this artifact we've been chasing, and it appears the Third Reich actually found something matching its description sometime in 1940. Uh, Nazis. Eileen, are you all right? Sorry. Yeah. I'm fine. Just a little scattered. Biddick called my ex-husband last night. He wants to put him in the Animus. To find the artifact before us? Exactly. Well, it would be fast using Vidic's animus. And maybe that would get us back to our original work. Satish, if we let that happen, then all our money dries up. Lillian is paying for us to find the artifact, not improve our methods. Do you understand? Right, of course. I'm sorry. Let's just... let's just burn those bridges when we cross them. Are we ready? Yes, just a few more adjustments, Senor Ian. I made a small change to the genetic input modulator. I'm hoping that buys us a few more minutes. Even a few seconds would be nice. I'm ready. All right. Settle in. Oh. I think that might be it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that was about Subject Zero. So Subject Zero is obviously the first guy that ever went into the Animus. That's kind of awesome. There's another one here that we can hack, I think. It's just whether we get another audio file, because those things were really long. Okay, let's have another hackity hack hack. Oh, it's another one of these ones. I kind of like these. These are entertaining. It's, it turns out that this is probably like a fact-finding episode. There's not going to be any killing or fighting. It might just be a lot of listening to these things. Just so you know what you're getting yourself in for. And go! And go! And go! And go! Oh, damn it! Okay, let's try that again. Up we go. Let's get through as fast as we can. Oh, son of a... Okay, I'm going to take it slow. <laughs> Maybe going fast doesn't really work for me. Go. There we go. Marvelous. Dun 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 Fantastic. Access granted. Extraction successful. Bypassing standard protocols. Awesome. Is there going to be another audio log? I think it might be. It is indeed. Settle in. First, I guess it's just a few seconds for you. A leap down the playlist. Anyway, um, I was talking about Clay. Uh, Kasmerica, Subject 16. So, when I fell into a coma back in Italy and woke up in the Animus Black Room, it was, um, so calming. It felt like I, uh, had woken up into a dream. A haze. A, a dream where none of this mess had ever happened. Uh, felt like I should just be getting ready for another day of pouring drinks at bad weather, and uh, another day of complaining about being between girlfriends and wondering what the hell to do with myself. But uh, when I saw Clay, just sitting there, it started to come back, you know, piece by piece, and when he told me about Lucy, I, uh, <laughs> fuck, you know, it, it hurt. You know, you know realizing that I killed her, without thinking or feeling anything, not at the time anyway. Well, then things just kept piling on. There were more memories of Ezio and Altair and the first civilization. And then right before he vanished, Clay passed on his memories to me. He showed me everything he had seen and lived through, and it was... It was brief, but overwhelming. I'm not really sure how to explain. He saw 
saw glimpses of Adam and Eve and their escape from slavery. He saw the beginning and the end of the war between the first Civ and humans. He saw Minerva, Juno, and Tinia trying to work out their their calculations. At least that's what they called them. They, they had these this tools, is Desmond. powerful uh, machines that could predict possible futures. Not what was going to happen, but what, uh, what, what could happen. Probabilities. And, well, they spent a lot of energy trying to figure out what was the most likely scenario for the future. Theirs and ours. And in the end, I guess they figured I was their most likely candidate. Some guy named Desmond, living at the beginning of the 21st century of the Common Era. But which Desmond was the right one? Because, you see, probability is a weird thing. It can branch out in so many ways. Which version of me did they need? Was it the Desmond who got married early and had a son? One who stayed single in New York? Or, or was it the Desmond who moved to San Francisco to be a waiter? Maybe uh, it was the Desmond who worked at an auto body shop in Chicago, or maybe it was the me who never ran away from his parents in the first place. First Civ had countless variations to choose from, but in the end, the uh, lucky one was me. I'm the Desmond their best calculations spit out. I'm the Desmond they left their messages for, and I guess I have to live with that honor. Oh my god, that was Desmond. That was kind of... I don't know, that was really sort of eye-opening. We learned quite a few... That's a really weird gun. The hell? Is that a Nerf gun? That kind of looks like a Nerf gun to me. And I think there's another one there. It's like an Abstergo gun. That is definitely a Nerf gun. Fair enough. But I don't know, that was kind of weirdly eye-opening, if you know what I mean. It's a little bit strange. Um, now, is there another computer in here that I can hack? I'm kind of enjoying this whole hacking thing at the moment. Especially considering I think I've only hacked uh, five of them or something like that. Is there any more in here? Can I go in here? Oh, it's a level two clearance. That's not fair. That's not what we want. We want level one clearance. Oh, we, we need level two clearance, I suppose, to get in there. No, 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 no. I'm not going near the elevator. Not just yet. I know that she wants to take me somewhere, but I'd rather not. I'm kind of having fun having a look around, you know. Um, there's another room here that we can go and have a look see in. We've not been in this one yet. So, what do we got in here? Oh, we got another one to hack. Can we hack this? I think we might have already hacked that. I think when it's got the red screen on, that means we've already hacked it. At least that's the assumption I'm going to go with anyway. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's one of them scanny barcode -y things. Can we scan that? What does it do? Sticky Note 12. Today, Extego Templar funds have given themselves to be base practical to wrongly that man and woman are delicate and sensible and feeling creatures in and themselves and therefore deserve satirity and comfort and mindlessness in the presence of pleasure nothing could be sick sicker falser disgusting lying bastards okay fair enough that was a little bit weird some guy just having a bit of a rant there oh we got another one that we can hack awesome I think this is probably a ball. Yeah, this is one of those ball hacking ones. Okay. Shouldn't be too hard. Um, wait. And we have done it. That was kind of easy. Still pretty cool, though. So, core access granted. Initiating Derbiter. Extraction sequence initiated. Core breach accessing information. I wonder if there's another audio. Oh, that's the guy. That's the Pope. Remember him? We killed him in the previous game. Okay, so Roderick Lanco, Pope Alexander the Fourth, a cleric and born virant, um, virant, sorry, vivant or whatever that means. By any name, Rodrigo Borgia served as a Templar Grandmaster from 1476 until his death. For too long, this man of faith and passion suffered under a smear of campaign at the hands of his enemy, Ezio Auditori. Let him now be celebrated and remembered for his progressive outlook and focus on family values. Do not celebrate this man. He is crazy. Literally mental, that guy. Okay, well, I did it, so I found it. That's good. That's another That's another computer hacked. And I think... Wait, is there another one over here that I can hack? Oh, there's another one. 
I was going to end that one there, but I think before I do, I'm going to hack this last computer. Well, the last one in this room, at least. There might be another thing about the Pope. Some more information to, I don't know, disgrace the Pope. Oh, there we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So what do we got? Yeah, we've accessed the core. Extraction sequence initiated. So what do we got? Another hey, audio log, maybe? Uh, oh, it is. You know, oh my uh, god, it's Desmond again. It's funny, I, I have this memory of you. Uh, one I keep coming back to. And I, I always think about it when I'm working or just before going to bed. Uh, because it um, sort of calms me, I guess. Um, I was 14, I think. And, uh, and, and you were trying to teach me how to, to walk with a light step. Remember that? how to be mindful of how much noise I made when I moved around. Simple stuff. Stuff I understand now, but back then, I, uh, gotta tell you, I thought you were just being <laughs> an asshole. Uh, so, uh, you told me you were gonna go up to your room and sit with your back to the door and read a book, and you wanted me to wait at least 15 minutes and then sneak up there and tap you on the shoulder without you knowing. I, I even remember the book you were reading at the time, the one by uh, Captain Johnson. And you warned me that if you caught me, we'd have to start all over. Then you went upstairs. And I waited. I waited, and I waited, and I waited. I waited four hours before deciding to go up. And even then, it took me 20 minutes to get to the foot of the stairs. And uh, another 30 to get up them. And then... Ten to get down the hall, and there I was at the door and peeked into your room. And I was, I was so hoping that you'd be asleep. But no. No, you, you were still reading. And I just about shit myself. But ten minutes later, I was just five feet away from you. And that's when I remember setting my foot down... And you flinched. Ever so slightly, you... You flinched. I thought maybe I'd imagined it. But I knew you'd heard me. You didn't say anything. You just checked your watch, you reached for your drink, you took a sip, and you kept reading. But I knew I'd failed. You didn't say anything. I, I, I didn't understand why. And I lunged and tapped you on the shoulder, and you turned around, and, oh, fantastic, you said, and you scooped me up, and you gave me a big hug, and I didn't say anything, but Dad, Dad, I was so pissed off. I wanted to scream at you. I, I failed, and you knew it, but you said nothing. And I stayed mad for weeks. I thought you were, you, you were patronizing me. I thought maybe you decided right there that I was never going to be the man you wanted me to be. But I realized just a few years ago that you checking your watch, that was the clue, wasn't it? You let me win because I had been so patient. I guess that impressed you. You know, maybe at that moment you thought it might be better to be my dad instead of my mentor. I, I don't really know. Maybe for you, they're, they're one and the same. You know, either way, I'm happy to know that both my mentor and my dad are looking out for me that day. I didn't understand that then. I think I do now. These are really, really insightful. I mean, damn, we're learning a lot about Desmond. And despite the fact that Desmond's dead as well, but you know, it makes it a little bit depressing, the fact that he's dead, but still, we're learning a lot about him. Okay, guys, I think before we move on, I'm going to end that one there. I might do some more hacking in the next episode, just so, you know, you've got a little bit of warning. Um, or we may just go straight to the elevator. It depends on whether I can find any computers to hack, I suppose. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.